Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm going to spend a few minutes here and cover the power supply circuit and design that's utilized in my Zenith 5S29. We'll first take a look at the AC line input voltage here and then we'll move over again and we'll look at the output of the transformer itself that feeds the plates of the 5Y3 and then we'll look at the output voltage itself across the caps and then really what I want to dig into is uh, showing everyone or get a better understanding, hopefully, of what happens with the voltage divider. And again, this particular power supply being more of what's called a fixed bias or back bias supply. Taking a look here at the power transformer, again, you can see it's a 95234. Again, I use my uh, Variac brought my AC line voltage up to 122 volts. Looking at the plates itself across both, around 345 volts AC. And again, 5 volts AC here is called out feeding the filament there of the 5Y3 and 6.3 volts to the other filament or heaters for the other tubes within the radio itself. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, voltages that I referenced here as I was doing my documentation. 263 volts DC is referenced back to uh, chassis ground as called out here from this point, which is the top side of the electrolytic uh, capacitor C13A, as noted. Again, that's my uh, B plus voltage for the radio. In addition, you can see 347 volts DC, as I called out again, back to C13 alpha on the plus side of the electrolytic, as referenced back to the negative side of the electrolytic is called out here. And as noted, that's not attached to chassis ground. Very important to note, again, it will be the B minus side of the supply, but not attached to chassis ground. You'll also notice here what I'm calling out is the speaker fill coil itself is on the negative side of that uh, C13 electrolytic uh, capacitor. It makes no difference. You'll see it done both ways, but in this case it uh, ties in and it's part of the design itself. The filtering action of the choke itself is the same regardless if it was on the top side or the bottom side. You will notice that we have a 66-volt drop here across that fill coil. And that's important to note, and that's part of the design that we'll touch on in just a moment. Another important factor is to create the negative bias that we'll use here in just a bit. You'll see that the center tap itself does not go to ground. It actually uh, is part of the circuit here that ties into the fill coil. And that particular point in the radio will be the most negative point. Before we move along to the voltage divider, let's look one more time here at the power supply. Again, this particular power supply utilizes two electrolytic capacitors, the choke, which is the fill coil itself, and again, this does all the filtering of the DC, cleans it up from the output side of that rectifier tube. Now let's move our focus here to the voltage divider, which is the CANDOM resistor in this 5S29. Don't let all the math you see to the right intimidate you. It used to bother the heck out of me. But we'll break it down here in just a moment, and I hope I'm able to keep it uh, simple and easy for folks that are just getting into the hobby to follow. To calculate the voltage drop across each resistor, we'll simply sum up or total the resistor values. In this case, as noted, 16,785 ohms. We'll use that value along with the known voltage input to calculate the current. 
With the total resistance now 16,785, you can see in the example, we'll calculate the current here by taking the voltage itself, which is E, divided by RT, again, which is the total resistance. And this, again, gives me the current flow across this uh, particular resistor chain, which you can see is just a little bit over 15 milliamps. So now we'll reference back to Ohm's law again. We'll calculate the voltage drop by taking the known current or calculated current times the resistance itself. Now you'll notice in my example up there I've got times 10,000. That's because I'm actually going to replace the canned ohm resistor with a 10K resistor instead of 11K. But the math itself uh, should be correct here for the 11,000. And again, it gives us a voltage drop when I multiply the current times the resistance of 172.4 volts. Now, knowing again our source is 263, 263 minus the 172.4 equals the 90.6 volts. Here you can see I'm continuing to use uh, Ohm's Law. Again, I'm using my calculated uh, current flow across all three resistors which again is just above uh, 15 milliamps, as you can see. I'm multiplying that value by each resistor individually to calculate the voltage drop across those resistors. And you can see that as well as my tap points uh, back over to uh, feed the uh, individual tubes within the circuit. The total voltage drop always has to equal your input, and in this case, 263, as you can see noted there by the uh, VDT. Um, let's move on now. I tell you what, before we move to the bottom section, let's take a look at the uh, wattage requirements or power requirements for the uh, resistors themselves. With an understanding now with the voltage drop across each resistor, it was time for me to move along and uh, do the power or wattage requirements for each resistor. Here I'm using Ohm's Law again. In this case, I already have the numbers in front of me, so I'm taking again the voltage, which is represented by E, times the current. And again, you can see the calculated uh, values, 2.7, 1.4, and 0.02. And in all cases, I'm going to multiply that by 3 or more to calculate some overhead. So I've got plenty of reserve there, and I'm not uh, stressing the uh, power resistors, and I get some good heat dissipation. So I would probably end up using uh, 10 watts for uh, at least the first. I could get by with 5s or less on the next two sections. Um, but simply, I'll probably uh, use 10 or more, whatever I have on hand. But anyway, that's the math behind that. Let's move along to the bottom section. Okay, to calculate that bottom section, again, I'm going to take the uh, same formulas that I used above. I'm going to look at uh, the total resistance. I'm going to look at R4, which is 250 ohms. I've actually got the DC resistance of the field coil, which measures 897, and a total, which is represented by RT, of 1147. Again, I can calculate my current taking the formula of my voltage, which is represented by E divided by RT. And again, that gives me 84.3 was my uh, total voltage drop across both sections divided by 1147, which was the total resistance. And you can see there I'm about 73.4 milliamps or 0 0.073496 milliamps of current. So in doing so, you can see the voltage drop across each section. Uh, right at 66 volts, again, for that speaker field coil. And an additional uh, 17 or 18 volts there for the uh, 250 ohm resistor. And again, the voltage is negative in this case, going back to the chassis ground, because as we indicated earlier, which I'm depicting here, that center tap um, position is more negative than the chassis itself. Um, thus, I'll have the negative voltage, and that's perfect for that uh, power tube that's inside the uh, Zenith 5S29, which led to the engineer's decision uh, to uh, engineer it that way. That tube likes to see, I think, around minus 17 to minus 20 on the grid uh, to create that uh, bias 
due to the cathode itself being tied to the chassis ground. So now understanding that voltage drop of around 17 to 18 volts that I'm seeing in the radio and how it's uh, calculated and kind of the theory behind it at a high level. Again, I can calculate what my wattage or power requirements are for that resistor as well, the 250 ohm. And you can see again, I'm using the same math as before. Uh, Ohm's law, and got it called out here. Again, I'm going to use a, a times 3 multiplier uh, to get uh, just under 5 watts there, uh, 4 watts. So I'd probably use a 5 watt resistor here. And uh, that would give me a nice uh, safety margin there for uh, some good heat dissipation. Anyway, that's where I'm at right now with my restoration. Again, I do not plan on using a 11K or 5700 ohm resistor. Uh, I'll probably use a 10K, 5000, and somewhere between an 85 and 100 ohm resistor uh, for that first section to the right. And uh, definitely the uh, 250 at the bottom to get the uh, proper bias. So folks, uh, thanks for uh, watching, following my channel. Hopefully some of this information may help others. If you have a similar model or have challenges uh, calculating the voltage drop and or the power requirements for those uh, voltage dividers that reside in those old antique radios. Again, uh, thanks for uh, watching and subscribing uh, to my channel.